this is a reminder video on how to do the star toe, which is rounded. And this will be knitted in the round on nine inch circulars. This toe is nice. Normally I do the wedged toe with the straight edge at the top, but to try something different, this is a really nice rounded toe. I prefer this to any other rounded toe. I've tried others where the toe just kind of spreads out further and that's just too much width for my foot. My foot's narrow, long and narrow. Um, this is good. It works for my foot. I'm using a 64 stitch count vanilla sock pattern, just plain old stockinette with the shadow wrap heel, which I made a reminder video on as well. And this is all knitted from cuff down. The sock color, the contrast toe, heel, and cuff is Malabrigo. Cordovan is the colorway by Malabrigo, which I believe is discontinued. They discontinued that couple years ago, unfortunately. It's a gorgeous color. The main foot is Mustache Yarns. I believe off the top of my head, the color is Cascaroons, which I've mentioned in previous reminder video when I did the heel, the shadow wrap heel. So this will be a reminder video for the toe. And before I get started on that, just wanted to do a quick little show and tell because I got happy mail and wanted to share. So this yarn along with these colors, I actually picked these up in my local, well, not so local, it's almost two hours away from me, um, a local yarn shop. So if anyone is looking for 100% lamb's wool, this is made in Scotland, spun up in Scotland. And the color is silver birch, dye lot 1717. I got this and a forest green, which I've already put away, so I won't get up to grab that one. But I figure I'll make probably a scarf um, mixing the two colors or maybe a color work hat, but it's super soft. Um, hopefully it won't fuzz up and pill once I start washing it. Um, it looks like it'll hold together very well, but it is, it is really soft, very nice texture. I also picked up some worsted weight yarns I'm creating a vintage keyhole scarf, and I absolutely love anything 1940s fashion style. Um, and I wanted to make a new keyhole scarf, and I picked up this different in a way. Um, it's a very tight, short cable stitch that I had never worked before, and I'm working on it now, so it's a work in progress. I'm about to finish it up um, once I get through this sock, and hopefully I'll finish my shawl before I go back to my scarf, but I definitely want to make another um, scarf. So this will be my first scarf pattern, first pattern ever that I created from scratch, so yay. Um, but I will do a reminder video on that because it would be nice to visually see it versus having to go through all of my notes when I started creating the scarf. Um, so if anyone is ever looking for a nice keyhole scarf, I'll end up doing a reminder video on that soon, hopefully next month, and it's currently May 18th. So hopefully I can finish up my shawl this month and then I can finish up my scarf and do a reminder video on it step by step. But I plan to do uh, the second scarf 
in this brown chocolatey color from Neighborhood Fiber Company. The color is Ramble Wood and it is a worsted weight yarn and that's what I used uh, weight wise for the yarn, uh, for the keyhole scarf that I'm currently working on. It's just from Sincere Sheep versus Neighborhood. And this is also same company, worsted, and the colorway is right here, Roland Park. It's just the label is still stuck on top. But these are nice and these are hardy. Um, they're full and they're just really full and hardy yarns. So they will definitely keep your neck warm. Nothing light about these, but nothing overly heavy, if that makes any sense. Um, this will keep me warm, but it feels as though air may get through once I knit it up because it'll be kind of light, even though it's a DK. That's just what it feels like now in my hand. But these, at least grabbing onto the skein, I know no cold air will get through this mix when I knit it up. I also tend to, well, not even tend, I buy a lot <laughs> of yarn from Vita Lifestyle. And this is her new Cloudy DK base. And this is Fruity Pebbles. I think she only had two of these left and I grabbed them both for darn sure. So, sorry, but I've been eyeballing this and really eyeballing all of her Cloudy DKs for a while and finally bit the bullet and grabbed the last two Fruity Pebbles. So I don't know if she'll come out with any more, but this is soft as well. We'll probably need to see what this is like knitted just in the single strand. Um, I've never knitted with anything like this before, so it'll be interesting to see how it comes out with just the one. Otherwise, I will double it and use both skeins simultaneously to see how that works. But it's a DK, so maybe just one skein will, will do me just fine. And I think I'll probably make a scarf with this. But this is the Fruity Pebbles DK Cloudy Base. She's got great yarns. Victoria, the owner of Vita Lifestyle, also makes um, body butters and candles. And none of this is sponsored. I just absolutely love her stuff. And again, it's Happy Mail. So wanted to share. Um, but the Fruity Pebbles, if you've ever had Fruity Pebbles, Fruity Pebbles before. The moment you open this, it's literally the cereal in a body butter. It's really crazy. Um, never have I had a body butter or a lotion or anything actually really truly smell identical to what it's supposed to be according to the label. This is Fruity Pebbles creamed up. Don't know how she did it. Um, but it's all natural, handmade, and it is extremely light, so a little, and I mean a little, goes a long way. You can see how much shine you get just with that little old bit, so this is enough for both of my hands. And it's not greasy, it's just you use a little dab, like that old saying, a dab will do ya. Um, so now I'll just go to bed smelling like cereal. Yay. But I don't mind because it does smell nice. Um, so wanted to share that. And plus, you can always use the jar for something. Which is nice. And her candles. This definitely smells like blueberry pancakes, which is really weird. Um, when you first open her candles... You'll either get sprinkles or cocoa beans. This one had like little blue, I guess it was the candle itself, but it was little blue blobs, little circular blobs for the blueberries. So those have all melted down, but this really does smell like blueberries. Um, 
the candle does last if you don't burn it out, you know, straight out for an entire day. It does last a couple of days. I do prefer, though, her Christmas candles. Those will make your entire house smell way better than Yankee Candle, in my opinion. And I do like Yankee Candle, but something about Victoria's Christmas, uh, like pine tree, pine cone, um, evergreen candles. My last, oh no, my second to last is because I'm a nerd and there's a wonderful podcaster who's also on Instagram. Her name is Stitched by Mrs. D. She makes project bags, she knits, she crochets, um, and she makes handmade, I don't know if you would necessarily call this a toy or a keepsake trinket, but it's the cutest little thing. She makes bunnies and bears, just various little cute animals, um, all handmade little buttons, little tails, and every creature that she creates has a name. So this is Rosie. Rosie's favorite food is green beans, and apparently she likes to eat wool. So I have to be very mindful of her. So Rosie sits on my little knitting ottoman while I knit and watch TV and whatnot. But super cute if anyone is ever into just lovely little things like this just to decorate with. The last item that I got um, at a local yarn store where I found the neighborhood and the lamb's wool yarns. Just a egg, a darning egg for sock mending. It actually comes in handy. I've always wanted to try one of these. And I thought maybe it would be kind of gimmicky. In my little old opinion, it actually works. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, I found that it's easier compared to, you know, having to sit here and mend holding the fabric. I can actually just pop the egg in and just hold. It gives me more surface room, something for my hand to really grip onto and mend a hole. Or when I complete this toe, it allows me to hold this and stitch it up and weave in the end in a small space like this. So not a gimmick, but it's not a necessity. But darning eggs, kind of nice, kind of neat little vintage tool. So I've rambled long enough. Let me go ahead and get started. And I think I'll make this a short video because the pattern itself is very repetitious. Um, and it's not hard to remember at all. So I'm gonna cut off pretty decent tail to weave in, got my contrast color here. Let me sure I get enough off to start. Now the star toe has to be divided into six sections. Um, it doesn't have to be, but it helps. That way you can see where you're doing your decreases. So I have two double pointed needles because when you get down to the very end and you can't knit on this small circumference anymore, if you're using um, a rounded nine inch circular, you go to your double points. That way you can manipulate the stitches and definitely have stitch markers. You'll need six of them. And I'm just using the little bulbs. So you'll need those as well. And of course your scissors to cut your yarn and a tiny little sewing needle to weave in your end. But you do need um, 
If you're not comfortable with reading your stitches where your decreases are, split this into six sections. This is a 64 stitch count sock. The thing is with this pattern, you have to have it in a stitch count for the toe. You have to have it divisible by six. So 64, 63, two and one, none of them are divisible by six. So I took my very last row that I knit and I dropped it down to 60 stitches. So I started with 64, did my shadow wrap heel, which I did a reminder video on before. Kept knitting up to where I needed to stop for my foot. And the last row that I knit, I decreased down to 60 stitches. Knitted 64 and last row dropped it down to 60. So it definitely has to be divisible by six to do this toe. So let me get the beginning of the round marker. Still need that. And go ahead and knit the first row. Just plain knit stitches. Stick these down in there. Hopefully they'll stay. And actually, if you want to, which is what I'm about to do, which I should have done before, but I didn't, I'm going to undo a few of these. And this is a decrease right here, so you're going to see it open up to two stitches. I just want to weave in my, uh, whatchamacallit, my contrast color. Still leave a good tail. And just to make sure, I'm going to triple check my stitch count since I just did that. Let me get this back. Okay. I just like to weave it in just to get it started. Good tail. Triple check. Two, four, six, eight, one. Two, four, six, eight, two. Six, eight, and six. Okay. Go ahead and get rid of that. Get my working yarn into position. So I've got 60 stitches on. I'm just going to stick all of this down in here. And this extra is because I happened to cut my main yarn too fast before I did my decrease. So I had to put it together. That's all that is put my beginning of the round marker on and I'm going to knit 10 and every 10 stitches I'm going to put a marker.
9 and 10. And that's the last one it's going to pull because of the working yarn that I had cut. So I'll just tighten that up. And actually I can weave it in. To keep it nice and tight, I can weave it in as I go. So I went around, did one plain row of knit stitches in my contrast color, separating into six sections. So here's the pattern, super easy. What I'm going to do is knit to the first stitch marker right up to, let me zoom in, I'm going to knit right up to these two stitches right here. And I'm going to make these a left leaning decrease, which is a slip slip knit. Then I'm going to move and keep knitting to the second stitch marker, to these two stitches before the marker, and they're going to become right leaning decreases, which is knit two together. And then move around, keep knitting to these two before the stitch marker and make them right leaning, knit two together. Then a left leaning again here, slip slip knit. And actually, do me a favor, please. Can you grab me a simply one of the stitch markers that Lindsay made? Anyone? Yep. Getting my helper to help me. Thank you. This way I remember that this is the left leaning. Make it a little easier on myself. I'm gonna get rid of this bulb. I'm going to put something colorful to catch my eye. This little narwhal will work with a little macaroon on top. So this is the left leaning. Thank you. And I will continue to knit to this stitch marker and make it a knit two together. And then when I get back here, to the beginning of the round, two, four, six, eight, ten. These last two stitches will become right leaning uh, decreases, knit two together. So again, it's knit to the first stitch marker, make an SSK, knit to the next one, knit two together, and then Again, knit two together and repeat. Go to the next one, which in this case will be my little narwhal. I'll make a left leaning slip slip knit and then come back to these last two sections here and do knit two together, knit two together. I'll do that one time around. The whole decrease is only on one round. Then I will knit two rows of plain knitting, nothing special at all. Then do the decreases again in one round, repeat. Two knits, one decrease. Two knits, one decrease. Meaning two knit rounds, one decrease round. But you start with the decrease round first. Decrease, then knit two. Decrease, then knit two. So let me go ahead and get started and stop talking. And again, I'm gonna weave this in and I'm just laying this yarn right on top to lock it in. I'm gonna whip it right back over. Give it a couple more stitches. And I'm just going to do this for a few stitches just to lock it in. Mm. 
somehow made a mistake. Go back and fix that. somehow knitted that in. Make sure it doesn't get knitted in. There. That's good enough. Leave that alone, and now I'm at the first two stitches before the first marker. Slip, slip, and knit. And then knit to the next. There are the two, knit them together. And then knit to the next one. Okay, right here, this is a knit two together. heading towards my little narwhal wall that lets me know that I'm about to do a slip slip knit. Eight. Oops. Went too far. Let me make sure two, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah. Slip, slip, knit right here on these two. And then go right on around. Okay. Knit these two together. Slip. Keep on knitting until the next marker. Okay. The next marker is the beginning of the round. Getting this tail out of the way and tightening this up. This will be knit two together. Okay, I'm going to stick this tail way in here. Get this stuff out of the way. Get all the tails out of the way. Okay, now I'm just going to knit all the way around. Tail's getting caught there. And to make sure that you don't lose track of your rounds in case you need to put this down, 
what you can do, either write it down or use a little counter and just pop in row one for your first knit stitch or your first knit round, not knit stitch, knit round. That was knit round one. Let's go to knit round two. Okay, going back to the beginning of the round marker. Now I'm gonna, since I have the stitch counter, I'm gonna drop it back down to zero. So I know to restart. I'm going to do the decrease round all over again. Knit. All the way until you get to the first marker two stitches before the marker and I'm going to slip slip and knit slip the marker knit again up to the next marker, two stitches before, right there, and knit them together. Slip the marker, knit, oops, dropped a stitch, that's okay. Pick it back up, flip it back into position and knit it, okay? I'm at the next plain old marker, which lets me know it's going to be two, knit two together. Go ahead and slip that marker. And here's my little narwhal, which means when I get to him or her, 
I'm going to slip slip knit. That's why I like having so many stitch markers. One, they're just cute and fun, but it's a good um, identifier to let me know what I'm doing. So slip, slip, knit, move my narwhal and keep on going. Two before the stitch marker, it's a plain old marker. I'm going to knit two together. And then keep on going around until I get to another marker, which will be my beginning of the round where I do another knit two together. Completed that. Now I'm going to go ahead and kick start my counter and start one round of knitting plain. And when I get back around to a little pumpkin frappuccino latte, whatever it is, stitch marker, I'm going to knit all the way around again. And if you don't want to use the stitch markers and section off your stitches, you don't have to. As long as you keep count and as long as you can read where your slip slip knit is and your knit two togethers. So right here, is the right leaning knit two together. So you have to make sure that you can read that, that you can tell what that is if you don't use the stitch markers. And then when you get to the left leaning slip, slip, knit, you'll have to be able to tell that the stitch is sliding to the left. You can see the bulk of the two stitches on the left side. So again, if you don't want to use stitch markers, you have to be able to read your stitches. And sometimes I'm just too tired to want to read my stitches. That's why I use stitch markers. So the right leaning to read it, you can see the double stitch that got put together, the two stitches, they're on the right side. They're not really showing themselves over here on the left, and it's hard to see because it's a dark yarn, but you can see there it is, and it's on the right side, it's pushing everything to the right, leaning it to the right. So that's how you can read the stitches. Okay. And once I get to the beginning of the round, I think I'm going to do kind of like a little intermission. And I'll keep knitting until I get to a point where I just can't knit anymore on this needle because I've run out of stitches. There's just not enough for me to knit on this small circular and I'll have to transfer stitches onto my double points. So I'll do a little intermission, and then when I pop back up, 
that's when I'll show how I get what little bit of stitches I have left onto my double points and um, show how to finish off the very end of the sock. But as you can tell, it's almost like a rapid fire um, decrease because you're just decreasing, decreasing all the way around compared to the standard wedge toe where you only decrease on the left and right. This one, you're decreasing all the way around in different points. Thus, you get the star effect. So... This will be intermission right here, fade out, and I'll come back when I get to the point where I can put everything onto my double points. So I am back and I have gotten to the point where I just cannot go any further. I am literally pulling on stitches because the circumference has gotten so small. So what I'm going to do is take off my beginning of the round and I went ahead and put um, an extra stitch marker. I replaced a stitch marker with something that would let me know that this first one was a left leaning SSK. That's why that's there. So what I'm going to do is, what I have currently is two stitches left for each section. So this right here is the beginning of the round to to all the way around in between each stitch marker. But I need to get it down to one stitch in between each marker for each section. And because this is so tight, I should have done this a few rounds ago. I'm going to put this on my double points right now. Make life easier for myself. Don't do what I just did, stretching and trying to get it down to two stitches between each section. Do at least maybe four in between. That way you're not pulling at things and getting frustrated. It's not even being frustrated, it's just it's tight. So there's my little narwhal for my left. That should be fine. Okay. I can leave that little guy in there. Okay. Back in play. I'm still in... Um, I just finished my decreases, so now I'm going to do two knit rounds, but I wanted to show that I've now split. So I'm just gonna knit across this, knit across this because I just finished my decreases. I'm gonna do plain round one on that needle, flip this over, and do plain round one on this needle. Come on. Okay. Now here's plain round number two. On needle one. Oops, splitting the stitch. There we go, get that in there. Flip this over and do plain round number two on the second needle. Get back to my beginning of the round, which will be here. 
I just took the stitch marker off the beginning of the round marker. Now I'm going to do my last decrease right here. If I can get this to slide. There we go. Okay. Last decrease. There's nothing in front. So I'm two in front of my stitch marker. This is my left leaning right here that I need to do. The stitch marker tells me that. So I'm just gonna automatically do it. Slip, slip, knit. Okay. And I'm gonna let him go right here. Two stitches before the marker. I'm going to, if it will let me, come on, come on, there we go. Go ahead and knit those two together. Something feels like it's caught. Let me do it again. Okay. There we go. That was a knit two together. Pop that marker off. This here is knit two together. Because these two stitches or stitch marker or actually yes let me triple check yes because my narwhal still has a stitches before him and this is tight so you got to kind of pull on these let me see if I can wiggle it backwards and shake it loose a little bit. Okay, just taking them off and putting them back on. I'm trying to get those stitches to loosen up. There we go. Okay. Turn this over. Here's my little narwhal. That lets me know. I need to do the left leaning, so slip, slip, and knit, right in here, let him go. These two would be a knit two together, let that one go, and the last two Come on. Whoops, at least they're on the needle. Knit two together for the last two. So now I have three and three. So I don't need to do two rounds of knit stitches. Once I do that very last decrease and I'm down to three stitches, I'm fine. I don't need to do any more. So, take this marker off my finger, I don't need it. I'm going to cut a pretty decent tail. Okay. Now, Kitchener stitch, purl the front and leave it, whoops, purl the front and leave it on, knit the back stitch and leave it on. So I still have my three stitches. Now what I'm going to do is knit the front stitch off now and purl the next stitch, leaving it on 
Now the back stitch, I'm going to purl off and knit the next stitch, but leave it on. Hopefully I'm not falling out of the camera. The next one I'm going to repeat, knit off the front, purl on and leave it on the next one. And the back one, I'm going to purl it off and knit the next one, leaving it on. And now that they're interlocked, I can just take the needles out. I know that's kind of scary, but that's all I need to do. Toe is done. My darning egg. I'm going to go ahead and use that. because I don't like that bunny ear, ear thing that it's got going on. I'm going to pull this a bit and see how I can best flatten it. And this is just a judgment call. You do it however you need to, to get this little bunny ear to lay flat. And I'm just picking up stitch legs, that's all going around. get back through those two little ears that were sticking up cinch them down there we go get back into a row there we go that's smoother that's better okay do a little bit more down this row And then get right in there in a second. Okay, I don't need the darning egg anymore. But what I will do is stick this needle right inside, flip the sock inside out. There it is. Just pull it so it pops out. And I can use the darning egg here also, which is what I'll probably end up doing. But I'm just going to end up weaving this all the way through until I get to a point where I feel comfortable that it's all secure. But the toe is done. Just finished it, already finished it, and they're a good match. My stripes are off, but that's how the stripes came out, so it is what it is, I don't mind. But yep, the star toe, and if that's too much of a point, what you can do is kind of pull on it there now it's rounded the star toe all nice and rounded hopefully this will help me in the future 
And if anyone else is watching, I hope this helps you also.